was supposed to be at Power Skills. As some of you might know, Power Skills is our um, career summit event that we just had last August. And now I'm thrilled that she is here today, as that couldn't happen last time. And we're so excited to have her um, here today. And I know that we'll all get a lot out of it. We've been looking forward to this. So my name is Rosalia Felice. I'm from Career Advising and Transition Services. And I'm not alone here today. I have some teammates. And I'll uh, ask them to say hi in the order that I see them. Emily. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you all. And Emily will be leading the question and answer period, which we ask that you hold until you hold your questions until uh, Laura's finished her presentation. But Emily will be leading that. We have Deanna. Welcome, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session today. And we have Valerie. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Bonjour. Oui, bonjour. J'ai oublié de dire bonjour en français, certainement. Bonjour à toi et tous. And welcome. The other thing I'd like to say is that we love when you interact. So please feel free uh, when Laura's speaking. If you want to use your reaction button at the bottom, that's wonderful. It's always wonderful when speakers can, can get a sense of what you're thinking and feeling. And at the same time, feel free to use the chat and talk amongst yourselves, as we say. So if something resonates with you and you want to chat, please go ahead and use the chat however you see fit. We're happy that you do that. And now it is my pleasure. I'm going to introduce Dr. Laura McMillan, tell you a little bit about her, but of course she'll tell you more about herself as the session continues. So Dr. Laura McMillan has over 20 years of experience in transformative education, working within a social justice framework. She has a BA in sociology from UC Berkeley, a master's in social justice education from UCLA, and a PhD in education from NYU. She is passionate about supporting the journey of personal transformation and collective upliftment. I mean, that's, what else is there to say? Well, I guess she'll let us know what there is to say, but that's quite a background that I know we're going to get a lot out of this session. So without further ado, please warmly welcome Dr. Laurie McMillan in whatever way you'd like. You could unmute yourself and clap or do this or whatever you think is appropriate. So thank you so much everyone for being here, Dr. Laurie McMillan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Oh, this is so nice. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Rosalia. This is and team. I am just truly grateful, honored, and excited to be here together in this space and time where we get to explore possibilities. And I hope that whatever we share here, that, that there's something of value for you in your journey, and it can support you in some way in your personal life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen, and we'll go through this together. So I'm going to be sharing with you what I call the WISE model, and I'll explain what the acronym means. Uh, and it, this is for personal transformation and creative contribution. Um, we are going to be spending a, a bit of time here together, and I would love to first kind of get to know who's in the room. So if you can please, in the chat box, just share something that you're grateful for and where you're joining us from. I want to see where, where are we all coming from? So I'm in Los Angeles and today I am grateful for a cloudy day. It makes me feel cozy. So let's hear from you all. Grateful for the sunshine in Montreal. Wonderful, John. Rosalia, grateful for that you can join us all. Thank you. Montreal is here. Sunny fall day in Montreal. Wonderful, Mary, welcome. Richmond, Virginia, welcome. Beautiful sunny day in Montreal. Tajana, welcome. Let's see, being alive, yes. Oh, being alive, that's it. <laughs> Grateful for health and resilience from Montreal. Welcome, Phil, for being alive. Absolutely, that is the greatest blessing. Here we are. So let's go ahead and we'll welcome everyone from wherever you're diving in from. Um, and for, if those that are seeing this uh, recorded, welcome to you as well. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just set the context for our conversation. And we're gonna, I'm gonna invite you to think about a paradigm shift that we're in the midst of between the old and new, new ways of being in the world. Um, we'll talk about what it takes to evolve, like anything that we wanna change personally, professionally in our communities. There, you know, what does it take to evolve into something different? Um, then I'll share the model with you. We'll talk about some power skills that can help us navigate these times. And then we'll end with living questions 
to activate our highest potential. And I look forward to your questions at the end as well. So let's talk about what can be called a great awakening. Um, we can call it anything, transition, uh, transformation, a time of great potential and possibility. Um, but I wanna just invite you to consider, you know, this massive worldwide change that we have experienced uh, through the, obviously the pandemic and also the growing awareness around injustice on a mass scale. Um, we are in a time of great change and transformation. I want to um, acknowledge that through the pandemic, of course, there's been such a loss and suffering, human suffering loss. And so there's a lot of compassion that, that you know, we can wrap around the loss of the, for those that experienced profound loss and through the pandemic and communities that were greatly impacted. Um, we know that the pandemic impacted uh, us all differently and exacerbated existing inequalities in our, in our world. And so we wanna have a lot of compassion for all of that and simultaneously hold at the same time the great possibility that is with us. So I wanna share with you uh, a couple of you know, elements that have come to the surface for us to consider as, 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 as the emerging new ways. So we are well aware now that there's deep interconnectivity among us. So we just needed a invisible virus to go off around the entire world. And we could see that even th through something that's invisible, how much we can infect, right? Affect one another, you know, you know, through the virus. And the possibility is here because we're so interconnected, how can we positively contribute in to, to each other's lives? And so we have this element of interconnectivity that has really come to the surface. Um, we had to really collaborate uh, and work together during this time. Um, and that's now part of how we can operate more, right? There's a focus on well-being, a lot of compassion and care, right? Through this time for ourselves, for our, our, our neighbors, for our families, for people who experience loss, suffering. So that's coming to the forefront in a much bigger way, on a, in, in a much global way. There's a sense of our shared humanity, right? We were all in it together. It impacted us differently, but we were all in it together um, and still are, right? So this element of shared humanity is an important one to hold on to as we think about how, how we want to move forward in our personal and professional lives and, and hold on to this awareness. There was a deep valuing of human connection. When we were in lockdown and we couldn't see each other, talk to each other, hug each other, visit friends, have dinner with family, celebrate birthdays, it, there is this like, you know, profound uh, understanding that we need one another. We, 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 we are very connected and being apart is, is challenging and it's, it's painful, right? So this element of human connection came to the forefront as just absolutely essential for our livelihood and our well-being. So how do we nurture that now and moving forward? A lot of gratitude and appreciation for the tiniest little thing. I remember going out from, from the lockdown and just feeling the sun on my face and just feeling so grateful to just feel the sun. So, so we can hold on to, you know, the little things in life and, and value them and, and, and feel gratitude for them in the moment. And then just valuing of human life, right? The, 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 the valuing that we weren't sure, you know, it, the presence of death always helps us and, you know, sickness always kind of inspires us to consider value our own personal lives in the moment, our family, our loved ones in the here and now. And so my invitation is that we consider that these unexpected opportunities for these values or these experiences, these qualities have come to the surface for us in some ways. And we have the option to, to move forward embodying these qualities as we move forward. So um, let's go on to the, to, to the next part. So we matter, right? We matter. So if, if I have COVID-19, I'm a very significant person relative to you in this moment, right? And likewise, but we can take it outside of the virus as an infection that can cause harm and consider how much we matter just because of how we can contribute and what we, how, how much good we can do in the world. And 
how, how we can bring our own, you know, ways of, of being that, that are helpful and supportive and inspiring and healing to others. And likewise, how we can benefit from each other, right? So each one of us matters. You matter, I matter. Everything we do matters. So we each have an opportunity to um, contribute to an emerging era through our own unique presence, our unique ways of being, our unique roles in life. And so I want to encourage you to, I'm going to share this kind of paradigm shift as I see it from what we can think about as the old world and then an emerging new world that we get to co-create together. So, and the pandemic kind of being this major, you know, kind of wake up call um, that allowed us to reevaluate, you know, who we are, what matters, what truly matters in our lives. What, 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 a, what, it, what truly matters? How, what is my life about? How, what do I want it to be about? Um, so there's, so this time is, is, is a pro profound time of, of inquiry and transformation personally and, and collectively. So this is just, I'm going to give you just a moment to look over this, you know, this framing of a paradigm shift from the old to the new. And these are, this is a broad kind of framing, but we can think about, it, and if you just reflect from your own perspective, when we look at the old ways, and we're talking like historical ways of being, relating, consciousness, structures, systems, messages from mass media, socialization through schooling, you know, when we look at how we have, you know, our past, we can see these elements of certain values and experiences around individualism, competition. We think about, you know, thinking about any, any, any industry, um, you know, we can think about, you know, ways of being a power over domination, personal gain, um, you know, that all things, you know, are guided by economic ends, like just how much money can this make? <laughs> what, uh, everything driven by, fine, you know, like economic ends, capitalistic ends. And then there's a maintenance of the status quo, right? We can think about loosely and broadly, we see elements of that in old ways. And some of the old ways work for, in some ways, but they don't necessarily work for, for you know, all things or all people. So when we look at the possibility of a, an emerging paradigm, um, we can consider that now that we're aware that we're fully interconnected, we can start to experience our lives and, and each other from an, thinking from a consciousness of interconnectivity, of seeing ourselves not just as an individual in my own little life, but that I, I am deeply interconnected with you all, with, with my community, with, with the world, right? So we see ourselves not as isolated individuals, but we see ourselves as a part of a great collective whole. And that's why we matter so much because we influence the whole and the whole influences us. And so we wanna be mindful and thoughtful of how do I wanna move in the world? Who am I being? How am I contributing? How am I learning from others? And so, you know, this is where the collaboration comes in and we're, we're shifting away from, you know, competition to collaboration, from thinking we have to have power over to share power, power with another, you know, um, going from just thinking about our, our own little lives and what can I gain, gain, gain for me and my family to how can we create a situation here where there's mutual benefit? Instead of feeling isolated, how can I find ways to connect in community? And instead of all things being driven by economic ideals, what about holistic you know, ways, ideals? Something that's more holistic because as human beings, we are whole. And, and there's a wholeness to us, right? There's in the intellectual, there's the emotional, there's the relational, there's the spiritual, there's the physical aspect of our lives where we are whole. And so we can think about well-being from a holistic perspective, which is an ecological perspective, which is an interconnected perspective. And, uh, and that we are uh, thinking about instead of just maintaining what is, how do we evolve? continuously into what's possible. And so when we, uh, if we want anything to change, <laughs> whether that's in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in our communities, in our world, 
um, we have to uh, evolve, right? We need, we personally, as the individual, the part of the greater whole, we personally have the option and the invitation to evolve. And what are we evolving? We're evolving our ways of thinking. We're, we're shifting our consciousness. We are um, evolving our ways of being and evolving our ways of relating to ourselves and to each other. And so this is one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, quotes from Rumi. You know, so, so being somebody who's always cared deeply about our world and justice and fairness and goodness, you know, it's, it's easy to look down into the world and, and say, oh, you know, those people need to change how they're doing things. And that needs to change over there. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That's not, that's not, that's not fair. They need to change, right? And, and that would get us into a state of disempowerment because then we're waiting for everything outside of ourselves to shift. So this is why I love this quote. Yesterday, I was clever. So I wanted the world to change, everyone else to change. Today, I am wise. So I am changing myself. And that, that quote from Rumi really resonates because it brings the power right back into the self. That as I go through my own process of evolution and transformation and, you know, change and becoming more of who I am and why I'm here and contribute my gifts, then I am positively changing the world around in, in, my, in me, right, around the, in the space I'm in. And maybe that trickles and ripples in different ways that we don't even know. And so the power can come back within the self for us to just contribute why we're here the best that we can with where we are and, and whatever ways we're called to contribute. So this requires a building of awareness. And as we build our awareness of ourselves, we can make choices around what is in alignment with who we are, our values, our, you know, our intentions in life, um, how we wanna contribute. So, um, so this is the, the WISE model and WISE stands for whole integrated self evolving. So if you think about yourself now, um, you're probably quite different than you were 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? Like we, we change, we grow, we learn. And we're kind of in a constant state of, of growth, right? Of evolution, just like the, the, the caterpillar and the butterfly. It's just a natural, it's a natural evolution into our greatest potential. And we can be, we can be active participants in that evolution by paying attention and by um, just being curious about who we are and why we're here. And then cultivating ourselves to become who we want to be and to contribute in the ways that we would love to contribute to the world. So in that, in that you know, process of contemplation and you know, wanting to be, you know, to do good in the world, we we can think about these two. There's multiple strands here that I'll share with you um, that we can pay attention to. So the first is um, our, the mind and the heart connection. So the mind and the heart work optimally when they're in harmony. And uh, there's discord when, for example, we might have a heart calling. Sorry, let me come back to that. We might have a heart calling, right? There might be something that's calling us at the heart level. And then the mind, because it's conditioned, starts to question, doubt, uh, I don't know, how's that going to happen? Why me? I don't think so. And we start to operate with some limiting beliefs that, that go against the, the kind of heart calling, right? So then the mind and the heart are not in harmony there. Um, and so what we, want to, what we want to do, we want to pay attention to what's happening at the heart level. What's the truth that I know in my heart? And how can my mind help align with that to bring my you know, deepest passions forward in life? Um, to use emotional intelligence to, to, to kind of guide and navigate our lives and have our minds work in harmony with that. So when we're thinking about growing ourselves, we want to be mindful about what's happening in our, in our minds and how is it aligning with what's happening in our hearts? Because our heart, the, you know, that's where the purity is. That's where we know at the heart level. 
right? It's like the mind, it's like the mind questions and the heart knows. So whatever that inner knowing is about what, about what our next steps are, uh, about what, you know, how to respond to a certain situation, you know, so whatever the heart's wanting to happen, if the mind can just align with it, then we'll, then we're in alignment there and we can move forward. Um, we can think of it then just really being aware of, you know, that we live on kind of multiple planes, right? There's the external world, everything outside of us. And then there's our inner world, our internal world, everything within us. And so whatever's happening outside of us, we're experiencing that internally, right? And then whatever we're experiencing internally influences how we engage in the external world. And our attention is constantly pulled into the external world, right? We have emails, text messages, uh, news, you know, family demands, commuting, like right, everything that requires our attention that pulls us into the external world is necessary to a certain degree because we have to navigate life. So obviously our attention is external as needed. And so the invitation is if we're wanting to grow and evolve and fulfill our own potential for being then it's important and necessary for us to also spend time in paying attention to what's happening inside. What, what are we feeling? What are there any intuitive inklings? Are there any creative ideas internally that want to come forward? So paying attention to the internal world is profoundly uh, necessary for us to grow and evolve and become you know, our highest potential. Because everything that we need is, you know, as far as our guidance is, is within. Our creative ideas, our intuition, our you know, passion, our purpose, it's all internal. So we gotta spend time getting to know what's inside and nurture that in whatever way that, that, that can look like for, for anybody, right? It could be reflection. It could be, um, you know, meditation. It could be just si being solitude, being in nature, uh, journaling, reading, having conversations that are, you know, introspective, pondering, contemplating. So there's a lot of ways that we can connect with the internal world and, and see what's wanting to happen for, what, for each one of us in service of our highest potential. So the idea is to balance out where our attention goes, take care of the things in the external world, and also find time to go within and see what's there and what's wanting to happen. Um, the other component here is this dimension between our, ourselves as an individual and who we are as an individual and how we're always connected with others, right? We're always in some in relation with, with, with other people. So this goes back to we're not isolated and we're not just individuals, we're deeply connected with others. So what this strand invites us to consider is who am I? Why am I here? What are my unique potential? What are my unique gifts and talents? What, what are my skills? What are my strengths? What are my needs? What are my hopes, my dreams? And then how can I develop and cultivate myself to, in, in ways that I can then bring all of my fullness into, you know, every space I'm in to contribute to, to other human beings in whatever way that might look like. And then simultaneously, who are the people in my life, my coworkers, my friends, my family, people I'm connected to, teachers, you know, um, authors, I mean, who, you know, influencing, you know, people outside of us, who are the people that I can learn from? Who are the people that, that, you know, that inspire me, that, that I can tune into and, you know, be inspired or learn something from, right? And, and also this is with, within our relationships, because also, as we know, through challenges in our interpersonal relationships, there's lessons there, there's growing there. So how can I take this interpersonal challenge with a colleague or with a family member or with a, you know, somebody, a friend, and what, what it, how, how can I learn from that? Oh, excuse me, how can I learn from that challenge and grow, right? So it's about how to 
how can we contribute and then how can we learn from others? So just bringing it back to where we were. Um, and then the last strand here is um, about this dynamic and this very real need for financial well-being, right? Like we gotta stay, have our lives working and we need basic food, shelter, all of the things that we need to operate. Of course, we need a financial well-being. Um, so we get jobs. And hopefully we enjoy our jobs or we have businesses or in whatever way to generate the income that we need to live, right? So that's an essential, it's foundational. And so we do that. And then there's also on the, on the other end of this is the always present possibility for our highest potential, our passions, our purpose to, to be what we tend to. And so the ideal would be a point of integration in the middle where we are doing what we love, right? We're making a living doing what we love. That's the point of integration there. And so as we're, we're thinking about ourselves evolving, growing, unfolding, getting to know ourselves more and contributing more of ourselves and this in the world, these are dimensions that we can pay attention to, to see where am I in balance? Where am I in balance? Where might I be a little bit out of balance? It's about balancing these dimensions of ourselves, about integrating them and about expanding them, right? So if I feel that I'm spending too much time focused on the external world and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm disconnected from my inner world, I'm in a state of imbalance. So I need to find time for myself. I have to find time to go to connect inward, right? Um, if my mind is, is, is racing and, and going into a million different directions and my heart has a calm, then what do I need to do here to bring some balance, sense of balance between what my heart's wanting to do in life and what my mind is busy trying to figure out? How do I, how do I use the brilliance of my mind to bring forth the callings of my heart, right? So we're just... We're, we're, we're paying attention to these dimensions so that we can continue to bring our whole selves into our lives to cultivate our wholeness and to keep growing and evolving and contributing um, through our unique gifts in whatever way we're called to contribute in this life. So that's what the model is. Um, there are some skills that can help us in becoming aware of where we might be in and out of balance and how to navigate interpersonal relationships and how to trust our intuition, like what's happening within ourselves. So we won't go too deep into these, but um, the practice of mindfulness, um, the skills of emotional intelligence and our intuition is our superpower. Um, our intuition is our superpower. And, and so these are three, three skill sets that we can learn and practice and develop, and they will help us in navigating the complexities of life and then being in balance with who we are and, um, and, and again, moving forward with our own potential. Um, so for those of us that uh, uh, might know a little bit about mindfulness, it's really about cultivating present moment awareness, being able to, being able to direct our attention at will. So this is what we were talking about before. If I'm fixated in the external world, I have a choice. I have the ability to take my attention and put it somewhere else, like a passion or a vision or an intention I have. So being aware, like, where's my attention? Oh, here, where do I want it to be? What's going to serve me the most in my own potential, in my own ability to contribute? Let me direct my attention where I need it to be. So it's a practice. That's where the awareness comes in and then the ability to choose comes in. Is this serving me what I'm paying attention to? Or can I use my attention elsewhere? Uh, mindfulness always also helps us to build this, uh, this space between when we experience some of the stimuli and how we respond to it. So instead of just reacting all the time, being mindfulness allows us to kind of create a pause between, okay, this just happened or this, you know, this situation I have to respond to. Let me be thoughtful about how to do that. 
that's in alignment with my highest, the highest version of myself. So who do I want to be in that conversation? And then we can step into that more. So it, it allows us to respond more skillfully and in alignment with our own highest values. Um, and also just being with what is and just skill, skillfully navigating all the complexities of being a human. Um, emotional intelligence is, uh, helps us in so many ways to be aware of what's happening within us again. And then what do we need to do to manage that in order to be able to be in the world in the ways that, that we would like to. Um, it, it's also about being aware of other people and uh, attuning to others so that we can align and, and, and harmonize in whatever ways that makes sense. And then relationship building. Um, and then um, our intuition, it's my like, love, uh, intuition is to me a superpower and it's innate within all of us, it's profoundly reliable. Um, as we learn how to listen to it and trust it, that's the inner, the inner guidance. Um, it's essential in navigating complex realities. There's research around it of how intuition plays a key role in decision-making, problem-solving, creativity, innovation. So being able to trust our intuition, listen for it, you know, and that kind of follow that guidance that is, is it, it is really, to me, it's an inner compass. I operate so much from an intuitive, you know, place. And then I connect all, you know, all other things to that, but it starts from that inner knowing of what is right for you. What, what's for, you know, for your highest potential and to be of highest service or, you know, to contribute. Um, and usually my experience with intuition is if I can trust my intuition, then it, it, it is, um, it's of, of, of highest service for all involved because it comes from a, a, a broader place, a deep intelligence connected to a cosmic intelligence. Um, so there's a lot to intuition um, that, I, that has served me well. And those of you that are intuitive and, follow, and, and trust your intuition and follow intuition, then you too know that it can guide us in ways that our minds um, are, are, are not able to. So into using our intuition is really kind of like a, a power source of our lives. And it opens up a whole lot of possibilities. So, um, so that's what, so those skills are the skills that can help us navigate all of these dimensions, right? Our intuition helps us navigate. What do I need to do? Our emotional intelligence skills, how do I navigate these complexities? Right, mindfulness, our awareness. Okay, what am I aware of on these dimensions here? And then what do I need to, how do I need to shift to be, you know, in alignment with my own growth, my own evolution, my values, who I am, why I'm here. And so that's the invitation is for us to be in this, you know, uh, exploration um, of these dimensions of our being and, um, and just finding ways to navigate the complexities of being a human. So, I think I'll pause there. Um, this is uh, all about our own uh, personal growth and evolution. Simultaneously supports a collective upliftment because we are so interconnected. So it's helpful for all of us. If all of us are curious about who we are, why we're here and how we each can grow into our highest possibility, we all benefit. We all benefit from that process and that um, that journey. So um, I'll I'll start sharing here, and I actually would love to um, hear um, thoughts. Or, or uh, I'm going to stop sharing so we can see each other. There we go. And I just want to invite anybody to come on out and share anything that you are thinking about. Any. Uh, questions or comments that, that are sparked by our conversation today. So I just would love to invite you out, either through the chat or in, in person. <laughs> I raised my head and I realized, okay, I'll just start. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Go ahead. That was, that was uh, really thought provoking. So I was just, I was just curious, given your education and your background, what made you 
um, go into this direction or feel that the, I imagine this was a calling and I don't mean to be presumptuous about that, but can you let us know a little bit about your journey? Uh, yeah. Um, so when I was seven years old, I heard uh, a voice. It wasn't my mind. It was something different. And uh, it came from I don't consciousness, spirit, I, the universe. I don't know where it came from. I know it just wasn't generated from my own brain. And the voice said, you're here for a reason. Your life has purpose. You're here to make a difference and to be a part of a shift in humanity. So that was at seven. And then from there, I just spent my whole life wanting to do that, wanting to make a difference. And so I did that through every, you know, my journey um, was mostly, in, it has been in education. So as a teacher, um, have, I have always been very deeply concerned about the problems of our world, um, especially uh, inequality. Just anything that is unfair is, is, I, it, you know, I've always cared about that as a child. And so once I, so then that's why I ended up, you know, going into sociology at UC Berkeley to try to understand like, how, how is it that things are so lopsided? Why, why do some people have and others don't have as much? Like, how does that get set up? And then once I became to, when I began to understand that it is a structural man-made problem, our inequality is man-made. So if it's man-made, then it can be remade, right? So what does it take to change what's not working for everyone? So what does that take? Well, we gotta we gotta change things, and you gotta you know. And so, um, so then I became a social justice educator um, to try to be a part of the solution through the power of education. To, to be a part of this, you know, the solution to make things better, right? More equitable, more fair. Um, and so I did that for many years. And, and so from there, you know, I started, there was, a, I was teaching at a, at a community college and one of uh, a student, his name is Christopher. He was one of the older students and uh, very, very bright. And he leaned back at his chair and, and, and I was doing like a lesson on uh it was a transitional writing class so we're talking about like paragraph structures and things like that and he just leaned back and he he said why, why do you do what you do and it just stopped me in my tracks and and i said what do you mean he's like i mean you know like you bring us all of this material you know about humanity and like potential and you know what's possible but like why? Why do you do that? And I didn't have an answer. I didn't have an answer for that question. I thought it was really a profound question. And so I spent time contemplating that for a while. And I was living in, in, in the mountains at that time. Um, and, um, and I started to, I was curious about the, I didn't know what the answer was to that question. I, it, it felt like he was asking me a very deep question. And so then in my contemplation, that's where this model started to come to me in these symbols. And so I, would, I was jotting it down and because I was trying to understand why, why do I do what I do? And why, why do I care about what I care about? And, and, so, and so anyways, that model came out, came out in, in pieces over time. And then I realized that the question he was asking me was inviting me to, to think about what is mine to do in the world. And through, so through that contemplation, um, that model came out and then that became the focus of my dissertation because I realized that I care about holistic well-being and like the holistic development of the human being, which is a holistic perspective. And there's a whole framework of holistic education. So I did my dissertation on holistic education. So that, you know, because it's about growing our full selves into our full potential so that we can do as much good as we can while we're here, but we got to activate ourselves and our gifts and our talents and our possibilities. So, 
it's a long answer, but it, 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 it's, it was, it's been a, a trajectory of how do we make the world a better place? How do we live a happy life? How, how do we, how do we maximize the potential that we're encoded with to honor this life that we've been gifted? And so those are the kind of questions that I, that I, that, that move me. Because when I think about my little life, the two guiding kind of power forces for me are, you know, a, a, a strong drive to be the highest, truest, most authentic and greatest version of myself. And that, and to do as much good as possible in the world while I'm here. Those are my two guiding forces. And so that's where all of this comes from. And so that's, that's kind of, you know, how, how the journey has been. And that's what I, I get called to do. And, um, and then I know that we're, in order to do that, in order to become our highest, the highest version of ourselves and do as much good in the world and fulfill our purpose for being here, we need to do that together collectively as part of a community because we need each other, because we are interconnected. So it all kind of just is connected that way. Yeah. Emilie. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Laura, for this incredible session. Um, I, before actually asking my question, I noticed there was a hand up with uh, Tatiana. Don't know if Tatiana wants oh, yes. to go ahead and ask your question. Um, Okay, well, we can, we can come back to it. Um, we do have a question in the chat from Sandra. Okay. It can be difficult to tap into our intuition if we're not used to doing it, of course. So do you have any tips to really develop this skill, um, mm. certain muscles to, to really you know, mm -hmm. focus on? Ah, oh, that is such a good question. Yes, yeah. Um, I think where that, that disconnection happens, it's, it's, it's over time and it's very normal that, that it happens where we kind of move away from our own intuition because society and conditioning does that. So as children, we, we absolutely are connected to our intuition and we know what we like, what we don't like, right? If, and anyone that's a parent or knows it, but like, very strongly connected to our own inner kind of guidance as children. But then we have to start doing what mommy and daddy think is best and what teachers think is best and what society says is best and what the media says is best. So suddenly what was true for each one of us, um, it gets kind of, we get trained out of it. So then what's the process of coming back is is, is starting to ask ourselves, well, what do I think about that? What feels, okay, I, I, I see that this parenting expert, expert says I should do X, Y, and Z with my children. <laughs> um, I could give up my power and believe that and do that. Trusting and putting my child's well-being in the hands of someone else's opinion or research or whatever, and I'm not invalidating expertise, but I know that when I became a parent, it got confusing because I have two kids and there's an expert and on any, on any topic, there's an expert on one side that says A and then there's an expert on the other side that says Z and then everyone else in between. So then who do I listen to, to do what's best for my child? Right, so this is kind of the, the the kind of training that we think that the answer is in somewhat some ex expert outside that they know what's best for me and my child. And so early on, this is I'll answer the question, but early on in my own parenting, I, I it was so confusing, and I just kind of shut all of that off, and I said, "What is the most primal? If I lived, you know, in a remote village um, somewhere." And there wasn't internet, there wasn't books, there wasn't experts. What would the, what would I as, as a mother, how would I take care of my child? Well, that just requires an innate knowing of how to tend to your own offspring, right? So, so then, so to answer the question, um, it, it's, is we have to, it, I think it's, 
It's helpful to learn from other people. Absolutely. And then we check in. Okay, so how does this resonate with my own sense of, of knowing? Or how does this resonate with what feels right for me? And then so we just have to keep coming back to me, the inner, the, the self. What do I think about that? What do I think about that? What feels right for me? So it's just, it's kind of just bringing our attention again, like kind of back to consulting with ourselves and talking it through with somebody. And so, um, so I do, so I think it's just a process of kind of coming back. It's just coming back in <laughs> a little bit more. And it's all there. We don't have to find it. It's there. It's just that we might be trained, you know, we might be used to looking outside for the guidance. And now the invitation is, I'll learn from everyone. I'm a lifelong learner. I, I love learning. And ultimately, the, it's like the inner authority. It's the inner self that truly knows what's in our own path, you know, what, what's for us to do in life and how to maneuver through it. Um, I hope that that was helpful. Um, we're absolutely conditioned not to lean into our intuition. Yeah, for sure. Okay, what is... Um... Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yeah, it's yes. definitely a process and learning to, you know, um, lean into ourselves is, uh, is, you know, is a practice for sure. I wanted to know, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm so such a believer in uh, which everything that you stand for and the importance of personal development for everyone, like it's for yourself and for everyone around you. And really, it's a way of it's a, an approach to really changing the world for, for the best. Um, and I feel that this is so important also within the within, you know, the workplace context. What do you think about um, or do you have any kind of thoughts on how people should be better positioning the case for personal development in, in the workplace, especially for places that don't necessarily encourage that um, and, uh, and don't understand that, you know, the investment in yourself actually benefits everybody, um, you know, employees and, and really the growth of, of the company or the organization. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And I think that that question um, is, is an important one. Um, so I, and the answer that comes up for me on that is, um, it, that, that, that I think it goes back to the individual. So like if I'm working, so I work at an institution Right. So, um, and the institution doesn't need to value personal growth and personal development. I, I do. Right. So like in my own time, you know, in my commute, I'm listening to, you know, empowering audios, um, at night, I might watch a, a YouTube video about some cool thing about some discovery and like, you know, science that, that, that helps me think about my own brain and how my brain works. And, you know, so that it is a, it is a, I think a personal choice, you know, whether we want to grow and, and, and be curious about our potential and then cultivate that through our own learning, you know, through our own, our own, you know, there's a cool workshop this weekend. I want to go to it because it inspires me. And I, I want to, that just, that calls to me. So I'm going to do that. So how does that come back to the workplace? Well, if I'm growing myself, if I'm growing myself, if I'm, if I'm, you know, connecting to things that inspire me, you know, through artistic expression, um, through, you know, whatever, like my gifts and talents are, whatever, whatever lights me up, whatever gets me excited about life. Then when I come back on Monday morning, I have a level of fulfillment, you know, because I'm engaging in, in, in learning that helps me grow and helps me develop my potential or, or helps me express my creativity or, you know, whatever it might be. So each one of us are so different, but I think there's a fulfillment there that when we come back into the workplace, we can be more present with the work, with the colleagues, 
Um, we might have, you know, a certain energy that there's like creativity that comes out. And so we can contribute in that team meeting a little bit differently because we're more full of life. Do you know what I mean? So, so I don't know. So, so, I mean, if in a workplace, if there was some, you know, professional development, personal development offered within the institution, that's, that's cool. That's great. But ultimately, you know, we are, we have our own lives and we get to choose how we want to engage with ourselves. And then as we grow as the individual, and then we come into a space with other humans, we can engage differently because we're growing. We have ideas, we have inspiration, we have, you know, creativity, you know, so we're activating, you know, there's something that happens that we're able to engage differently within the institutions, within the workplace that can be beneficial, right? So as an example, if I'm practicing, um, you know, if I take a class, which I did on mindful self-compassion, an eight week course, right? That was on a, you know, Thursday at 7 p.m., right? Nothing to do with the work environment, but just I resonated with that, the research around it. I wanted to, to, to go through the class, right? It was a profoundly transformative experience because it, it taught me how to be kind and compassionate with myself. And as somebody who is, you know, a high achiever, you know, we have, you know, and there's like an inner critic that we all have, that was a loud voice. That's the mind that, that can stop, you know, a lot of things. So I learned how to be compassionate. And what does that do then? Monday morning, Tuesday morning, when I'm engaging with my colleagues, I'm coming with a different awareness. I'm coming with a different practice that I'm, you know, that I'm practicing. Maybe it's, I'm, I'm a little softer with like myself. And if there's mistakes, I can be just easy about it. So you see how like what I'm doing is just going to influence how I engage in, in, in the workplace. So that's just an example of, of how it can be beneficial for others, even if it doesn't come within top down, big initiative, you know, in an institution. Thank you so much. That makes a, a lot of sense and uh, definitely, um, definitely a lot to, to work on. Uh, as you mentioned, it's definitely a process. I don't know if anybody has any questions, feel free to raise them. Um, Go for it, Diana. Thank you, Emily. Uh, well, I'm one of those who likes to see connection between everything that uh, I'm experiencing. And I am particularly happy to connect with you today because uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've been re reading Rumi and you broke that oh. <laughs> yeah, Rumi's poetry. So it's, it's mm. a, a nice connection. And I'm reading a book about cyber psycho-cybernetics um yeah it's like the science that is behind our brain like our brain mm. is wired to trouble shoot problems in life in general so it's like about trusting our own what you said intuition what you call the intuition is trusting our let it work let let our brain works to solve whatever mm. uh, issue we we have to deal with and when you spoke about your journey, you, you said that you were asking yourself that question of your purpose, and mm -hmm. it was hard to solve. Mm -hmm. And I remember that in the book, um, the author says that when you face a problem or a situation that you haven't faced before or a question, it's like the, getting the answer is as hard as trying to remember a sound that you forgot so it's mm. like that hard it's like that task yes. is very hard mm -hmm. and i'm curious because you you said that um like that work on yourself it's about trusting yourself and it has to do also with letting that the uh, engineering like uh -huh. engineering of your brain works itself not yes. like let it work not make it work so and, and people are obsessed to learn how to make it work like the intuition uh -huh. how to boost your creativity like if uh -huh. it is a recipe you know and it is not so how uh -huh. in your experience how do you make it work for yourself when 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 you need to get an answer from uh -huh life 
for your own creativity, how how you let it let it work and and just trust yourself that the answer will come. Yeah, wow, that is a great question. Um, that is a great great question, and I think um, there's a a poet. You know, you mentioned Rumi. There's there's a poet. Um, um, Rilke, I forgot the first part of his, his or her name, but Rilke is the last name. And um, I think it's a him. Um, he has this wonderful poem about what you're saying, which is, and his advice is to live the questions, to, to, to live the question, um, because the answers will emerge as they need to in time. And so the trusting ourselves also is a, a certain trusting in a, in a greater intelligence of life because we do, you know, we might receive the answer in a dream. We can't control or force that to happen, right? We might, we might have a dream and we wake up and it's like, oh, I had this uh, really interesting dream. And then that contemplation might open up a, a different part of an answer that comes later. Right. So, um, there's, I think there's, there's a, um, you know, a patience involved in that. And, and, and uh, yes, Rainer and Maria Rilke, exactly. Yeah. So his advice is, is to just, is, is, is that we, we want the answer <laughs> because we're like, okay, if I can have the answer, then I can do the next thing. Um, and that's part of the kind of um, productivity, you know, I think like capitalistic, Thing that we have going on where it's like we got to keep moving forward and move the machine and what's the answer so we can keep going right and 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 it works when we're building a house right like if we're building a house we need to know where are we going to put the this knob here or how are the stairs like we need those answers to build the house but that's a very physical thing out into the world what what i'm hearing from your question is something very internal about like what's here for me or what's you know what's this what's going to be you know, the best way to respond to this challenge or what's the answer that I'm seeking here. That's a very internal process that is hard to um, force because there might be a, to me, there's a greater um, intelligence that is supporting us. And, and maybe at this time, you know, maybe there's something else that's needed at this time. Maybe what's needed is the practice of patience. And then in that cultivating patience, the answer arrives in it's this very different way that we thought. And it's like, ah, oh, there's a piece. Oh, that makes sense. And there's a synchronicity, right? The person shows up or the book shows up or the, and then we get a piece of the answer. So I, I think it's, um, I think it is a, um, trying to force it. Uh, so it's a revelation process, I think. It's a revelation process. Yeah. There's a comment in the chat about that. Andre says, people sometimes are afraid to show to others how they feel or what they think. Um, in my position at work, I have to take decisions and I had to learn to trust myself because others count on me to fix problems. Um, so mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, thank you, Andre, for that. Um, and, you know, when we're thinking about like, like collaboration in, in the workplace or leaders. So there, there's another element here at play too, right? So what, what Andre Jay said, said was pe people rely on me, right? To have the answer, to have the answer. Um, when making certain life decisions, sometimes there's a struggle between the heart and the mind. Absolutely, Phil. Yes, it's like, it's almost like the epic, epic struggle. Yes. Um, hey, Phil. <laughs> Um, love to get to your question too, but yes. So, so, so going back to what Andre was saying there, um, that's a lot of pressure, isn't it? To have the answer for everyone, you know? So then it kind of calls into question when we think about leadership, what, how can we think about leadership or, you know, leading a team or something in a way that again is collaborative so that we're inviting what, what do you all think? What has anybody had experience with this before? Has there other ideas that we can consider? And then together 
we can make meaning together. And then definitely as the leader or facilitator, there's deep intuition. So we invite ideas from others and then be able to kind of see like, all right, well, maybe it sounds like if we do this and this and this, maybe this can be how we move forward. Right. So there's a different a way, but it invites other people's intuition, other people's creativity into the mix. And so, um, yeah, so so uh, just going back to I want to go back to um, what Andre said for a second to make sure that I did I address that, Andre? Let's see. Some oh, people sometimes are afraid to show to others how they feel or what they think. Yeah. In my position of work, I have to take take decisions and have to learn to trust myself. Right. Count on me to fix problems. Yeah, so so from a leadership perspective, um, you know, it's it's uh, helpful to invite. So leaders might have developed a certain trust in the self to invite those that we work with, you know, to also trust themselves and to also bring their kind of intuitive knowings or inklings. And 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 it, I I totally agree with you, Andre. By the way, when you said that about afraid, because. Um, it takes courage. It takes absolutely takes courage to bring an intuitive nudge, like what if, into a space, right? Here's well, here's a thought. What if we think about, right? It takes courage to do that because it, it needs to be like, no, that's not going to work. So let's move on. And then it's like, okay, I had a little, you know, I had a little inkling. So it does. It does take courage, I think, to. Um, to bring our ideas forward, to bring our intuitive knowings forward, how we feel forward. And that's where, going back to Emily, your point about the workplace, if what would be helpful in the workplace is to create environments where we say, hey, you know, we're in this together. Everyone has creativity. Everyone has intuition and ideas. Like we want those on the table. Like, let's look at it together. You know, like, yes, I'm the leader. Yes, I'm the so-and-so, but let's, um, I want to, let's all together bring our ideas and then that creates safety so if we can create safety in the workplace for those feelings and thoughts and intuitions to come just to be put on the table doesn't mean that they have to be taken up as the way forward but just we want them on the table we want to look at them and then like artists you can look at all the pieces and be like okay how do these how can we connect these and how does this how can we do this together so that would be a huge service in the workplace is to create safety around and you know, an environment where ideas, feelings, thoughts, you know, something that doesn't sit right with somebody can be spoken so that we can together kind of work with it. Yeah, thank you. And then um, Phil, did you wanna um, come on out and share what, what, what you had, uh, what, you want, what you said? You don't have to, but I, I wanna just honor your, your contribution. You said, when making certain life decisions, sometimes there's a struggle between the heart and the mind. Yes. When you say trust your intuition, do you think our intuition is more connected to the heart, the mind, or is it separate? Ah, that's such a good question. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I could not, I couldn't find a button to unmute myself, but <laughs> read, you, read, <laughs> you read my question. So yeah, so I hope that's clear. Yeah kind of general, but I, I think it's clear also. So that's, yeah, yeah. I don't have anything else to add. So I'm just curious to to see what you have to say. What are your thoughts on? on yeah, oh, it's, that is, um, that, that's just such a, that's such a, that, that question right there, right? The mind and the heart. I mean, that's, it's this, it's like, if they can just be best friends and like talk to each other, you know, then we can, you know, we can move forward because it, we are often at odds and it's because our minds are the conditioned part, right? We get mm -hmm. conditioned, but the heart is pure, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, when you, when we think about like a big decision to make, right? We feel like, like, let's go sleep on it or what, you know, what does your heart say? Right, because it, it it gets very confusing in our minds. Our minds are amazing. It, we're brilliant. We have this incredible human faculty of the brain, the mind. Um, and because it's so like elaborate, um, it we can get confused yeah. because we want to start like, so should I go this way? Is this the right strategy? Well, how about over here? But then, what if I do this? And then, what's that going to happen? So then our minds start to try to maybe do what, what Diana was saying, Diana, like 
kind of control, like find the answer, but it gets convoluted. And so when I think about it, so that's where intuition is helpful. And then the heart is, is where I feel for me, you know, the heart is there's deep emotional intelligence. There's a, there's a deep power in the heart. There's research around um, our hearts beyond the physical organ, but just like the electromagnetic field that emits from our hearts, that's the work of the Heart Math Institute. They can see how the, you know, there's a, um, a resonance that comes from our heart and an electromagnetic field from the heart that's bigger than, than what comes from our minds. And there's more information from the heart going up to the mind than from the mind to the heart. So the heart, and I think about where the heart is positioned is the center, because the heart is like the core, mm -hmm. you know? And so when we're in the heart, it's like that's when we can when we can get to the heart and ask the heart, what do you think about this? It's the answers are simple. That that's a, an indication that we're that we're hearing the intuition, which I do think is connected to heart. Right. Um, the answers are usually simple and love-based. Right. Um, and so, so we just have to get there, get into the heart um, and start to develop a, a relationship, a connection, you know, with the heart, you know, writing, talking about it. Um, you know, what, what feels right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because um sometimes and in, in doing a lot of meditating and, and pondering and, and and on that matter particularly and I, I i do think that the heart anyway the heart and the intuition are connected um mm -hmm. and um what i was going to say are connected and are they one for, like are, are they interchangeable are they one in the same but mm. if, you know, physically, you know, you have the heart, you have the mind. But I, think, and we talk about the gut, off the gut, often. Mm -hmm. you know, I trust your gut, trust your. And I find to me, yes. you know, wishing is the gut, you know, so that mm -hmm. mind would be still separate but really connected. But so that's why I was asking the, the question. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I know it's not an easy. Thing, and it's not a general rule, but. I, I, I do understand what you're saying, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, and I think what you're saying too, Phil, is really important because then there's body wisdom, mm -hmm. right? So it's like guttural, like, you know, when something, when something just like, it feels at the gut level, like there's something, this, there's something not okay about this or this, about this person. Like, I just feel it in my gut. I yeah. can't pinpoint it. Yeah. Right. On, they look amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, something that just doesn't resonate you know and this is what we're talking about being holistic there's we have yeah. all of our faculties yeah we have yeah. hearts we have our bodies we have our you know minds we have our emotions we have our like our you know connection you yeah. know to spiritual life if, if those of us that, that that are connected to our own spirituality yeah. you know we're connected to nature so we start to because we're connected on so many levels we have information that's being processed on all those levels and yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, it's an interconnected experience. And so it is, so the mind might feel separate um, just because we have privileged it for so long. And so we were very good up here and now we're starting to open into more holistic ways of, of understanding ourselves and then, and then connecting with ourselves, connecting with our bodies, with our hearts more, with each other, with you know, nature more. So that's where we start get into more of a harmony um, and can access again, our own knowing that is holistic. And so, so it's just a holistic knowing after a while, right? Because yeah. we're ourselves that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I strongly believe in that and the harmony between, you know, let's say mind, body, soul, let's say. And, uh, but yeah, as we said, you know, with the gut feeling, and I think that, you know, your mind can confuse you, your heart, usually tells you the truth, but I think that uh, in general, your gut feeling doesn't lie. That lie, that doesn't lie. So, and you don't know why 
but that doesn't lie usually. So I may have answered my yeah. question myself in a way in that conversation with you but, uh, about, you know, intuition and the relationship with heart and mind, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the gut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, mm, totally. Thank you. Yeah. That was a good, good, the good conversation. It helped us unpack that a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you, you know, so much. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, you know, uh, Phil, you talked about mind, heart, and soul. Mm-hmm. And some people say that, that, that intuition is the language of the soul. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, and so it's like, to me, in some ways, the heart is the doorway to the soul. You know, that's just sometimes how I think about it. So if I can connect with my heart, I, then I can hear the whispers from the soul through intuition more. You know, that's how, somehow, sometimes how I think about it. Yeah. Um, but the soul, you know, the soul's a whole, you know, mysterious, you know, are, is the soul inside of us? Is it outside of us? Is yeah. it, you know, and who knows? I don't know. But I do know that when intuition comes and that, that it is from a deep core place that is untouched yeah. Yeah. by life. Yeah. And, and often when you don't listen to that, you pay the price. You know, so I, it's happened to me too many times. So, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And so trusting our intuition is... Um, yeah, it's a kind of trial and error process. And you know yeah. those situations where you felt that intuitive knowing, that gut knowing, and it was like, okay, I should probably go right here. I feel like the right thing is to go this way. Yeah. Mind is like, well, maybe you should just go this way because da 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 da. da. So then we go left and that didn't work out, right? right. And then it's like, I, I knew that I just, I knew that I needed, right? So we just, we take our own lives as, as our evidence base. Yeah. Right. The times that I've listened to my intuition, how did that work out? The times mm-hmm. where I didn't, how did that work out? So we just get, we are our own, our lives are our own evidence base for us to navigate. Mm-hmm. We learn from everything, but ultimately we're in the driver's seat of our own life. So totally. how do we make this based on what we've learned in our whole lifetime, the yeah. wisdom and the knowledge and the experience, that's, that's what guides us, you know, yeah. and that's right for each one of us. Yeah. Yeah. And then we share our insights and we learn from each other. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Phil. I really appreciate the conversation. Yeah. So it comes much. to Thank mm-hmm. you. Brad. Sorry. I didn't want to cut you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I, think, much. I know. Thank you. We, thank you for those for just hanging out here for a little bit. Um, I'll turn it back to you all. You've been so yeah. generous with your time, and thank you uh, to Phil for your great questions and continuing the conversation, and to everyone else for your wonderful questions. I feel that there's uh, just this conversation made me think of a book that really changed my life. I know it's a, a popular one, "A New Earth" by Eckhart Tolle. Um, um. Yeah, yes. it just made me think of how it's really reminds you how to really focus on the present, the present moment to to mm-hmm. live, it, uh, to um, be more conscious. And as he talks about the importance of uh, really, you know, tapping into the present moment and um, this rate, like making a shift uh, in your own life. And I'm doing that a shift in 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 consciousness for others uh, and you mentioned that it just it reminds me um so much of uh of w- what also he, he talks about um thank you so much for uh, this session was just wow uh thank you so much for breaking down really how to navigate the the complexities of being um, and uh and the importance of really personal development uh which is such a key element for us individually and collectively your insights really are so thought-provoking, so valuable in, in helping us to look inward and really uh, really learn how to listen to our greater intelligence. Uh, and mm-hmm. really, you know, as a way to respond to everyday challenges and, and really move closer to uh, our true potential. 
whatever that looks like for every single person. Uh, thank you for being so generous yes. and answering all these great questions. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure. Hold on one second. I just know that my computer is about to, to drop, so I just don't want it to drop with a proper, a proper, uh, a proper uh, goodbye or till next time. But, uh, yes, um, Emily, I just I feel like you just you just wrapped it up so beautifully. And uh, yeah, and there's so many great teachers and, you know, books and, you know, and and, you know, like the scientific community, you know, discoveries in quantum physics. And, you know, like there's there's so much for us to we're so amazing as human beings. <laughs> and so if we could just care, get curious about ourselves and each other and just learn and grow and share and, you know, and then contribute, we just, you know, we get to to move together in, in this journey. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you for this opportunity to be here. Thank you. Thank I just you pass it on to Rosalia.